Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of structural engineering. We'll be designing a 203 by 203 by 86 kilogram per meter UC column encased in concrete, just like the one you see on your screen. Have you ever wondered why we encase the column in concrete? Let's get started and find out. First, let's discuss the properties of our cased column. The gross area of a concrete casing is determined by its width and depth. For our example, the minimum width is 308.8 mm and the minimum depth is 322.3 mm. By multiplying these together, we find a gross area of 99,526 square millimeters. Why do we need to calculate the gross area? I'll leave that for you to think about. Now, let's shift our focus to the steel section. According to our tables, for the gross area for a 203 by 200 and 3 by 86 UC is 110 square centimeters. However, we need to convert this to square millimeters to maintain consistency in our measurements, which gives us 11,000 square millimeters. Consistency in units is crucial in engineering calculations, but do you know why? Next, we need to examine the radius of gyration. For our uncased section, Rx is 92.7 mm and Ry is 53.2 mm. For the cased section, Ry is 0.2 times the width of the casing, amounting to 61.8 mm. Why is the radius of gyration significant in column design? Let's ponder over this. Our column has an effective length of 5,000 mm and the steel yield strength is 265 newton per square millimeters. But what factors can affect the yield strength of steel? It's time to calculate the slenderness ratios. For lambda x, we get 54 when we divide the effective length by Rx. For lambda v, we get 81 by dividing the effective length by Ry. These slenderness ratios reveal interesting details about our column, but can you guess what they are? From table 27b and 27c, we find the compressive strength of steel to be 223 newton per square millimeters for lambda x and 155 newton per square millimeters for lambda y. We go with a lower value here. 155 newton per square millimeters. But why do you think we choose the lower value? Next up is the calculation of compression resistance. We use the formula shown, and taking FCU as 20 newton per square millimeters, we find the compression resistance to be 2,229 kilonewtons. Ever wondered why this value shouldn't be greater than the short stroke capacity of the section? Finally, let's compute the short strut capacity. Using the formula shown, we find the short strut capacity to be 3,413 kilonewtons. Why do we need to calculate this? I'll let you mull over it. After comparing the compression resistance and the short strut capacity, we find that the compression resistance is less. Hence, the compression resistance of our cased column is 2,229 kilonewtons. Have you considered what would happen if the compression resistance was greater than the short strut capacity? As we wrap up, let's quickly recap. We've successfully designed a UC column encased in concrete, delving into the core principles of structural engineering. We've examined the properties of our column, like the gross area and the radius of gyration. We've explored the importance of consistency in engineering calculations, learned how to calculate the slenderness ratios, and examined the compressive strength of steel and why the lower value governs. We've also calculated the compression resistance and short strut capacity, showing their crucial roles in safe and efficient structure design. I hope you found this video informative and engaging. If you did, please hit that like button. It helps a lot. Share this video with your friends, 
classmates, or anyone interested in structural engineering, and let's spark their curiosity about the world of design. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from us. We have a lot more exciting topics in the pipeline and can't wait to share them with you. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep exploring and keep learning.